This week on NSFW, we are joined by legendary artist Len Peralta of the Geek A Week franchise. We feature the band Lumpia, who rocks so hard, they fracture the very internet. And a very special, amazing celebrity guest stops by. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 95 for September 27th, 2011. El Celsior. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account for six months, go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW9. Ice cream, that is cheap. Fact. And then I suspended Marsha off this bridge and took a virgin heifer night riding for a while. We never got a dead spirit. We hated it, though. It's disgusting. Someone had a grade A lungfish decorate their home for a Merry Fool's function. Tuna, eggs, Doritos, cheesecake, tamale. See ya. Wash that smile off. Now I'm going to tell you something. Now sit down. What's good is to get these goats for our computer industry. <laughs> there we go, Brian. All right, all right, all right. Go out with the winner. I see where you're headed. And just like that, it is go time for NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernets, the show that is nominally safe for work. And I present to you the Eye of Sauron, embodied in one Justin Robert Young III. What is going on, Professor J.R. Weibels? Oh, my God, Brian. Every once in a while, in the core of my body, there springs a passion and an excitement. And then you get arrested. through my eyes and fries the internet. <laughs> that is the excitement that I get when we talk to Tom Barrett. It's not Tom Barrett. Something close to that Tom, is what I not... feel for Len Peralta. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> the Geekling. Uh, nice, thank you. I am. Uh, I'm glad to be here, uh, impersonating Tom. It's, uh, it's good. In for the vacationing guest, Tom Merritt. We have a replacement guest. One. Len Absolutely. Peralta. No, seriously, folks. Listen, if you do not know the impeccably, amazingly multi talented Len Peralta from his Geek a Week trading card project then you need to get on the goddamn train because uh, not only has he In fact, that's their new slogan. Geek that a is week. The new slogan get on the GD on right train. Now, yes. <laughs> now get yeah. going through legal right now. <laughs> exactly. It's just Len staring at you going like... <laughs> He's You're like, a goddamn train, guys. What are we waiting for? Was there a problem? Come on, get Wait, with it, man. Actually, this, this supersedes the previous campaign, which was Len saying, what, you better than me? What is this? <laughs> you want... Well, you think you're so great? Get on the okay. sit out on the train. Uh, <laughs> hey, for I those like for somebody who and has been actually, the, the next set uh, slogan is okay, fine, whatever. Don't waste my time. <laughs> you guys, are you guys available for branding? I am actually looking for a, a, a branding, uh, like an, a new ID. Series can... Series Five says you're the one making a big deal about it. <laughs> I was just. You're the one who freaked out. And that's how this whole thing got started. Geek a Week, season five. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, followed then by season six. Okay. I'm not the one being a bitch. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. And you process. <clears throat> Series eight is, you're the one yelling. You're the one yelling. That's all I'm saying. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> I love it. And then season season nine is uh, I'm not even gonna say a word. Followed by season ten, which is okay. You're bringing up the rug again. Listen, I told you. Uh, the, I, I yes, I had too much, but you're the one who brought wet red wine 
And I'm sorry that it stains. What am I supposed to do, Marsha? Season, huh? <laughs> season 11 will just be, if you say so. <laughs> Whatever you say. No, fine. No, yes, seriously, it's fine. Geek a week. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, season 13 will be, mm-hmm. Sure. No, no, sure. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Because uh, apparently you're the boss around here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. For, in all seriousness, for people who don't know, explain. What's the elevator pitch you give for the Geek A Week project, Lynn? Oh, yes. Geek A Week was a uh, online art project where I connected with 52 geeks in 52 weeks and drew them as trading cards. <laughs> and uh, I, I finished that, and now I'm almost, almost to the end of season two, which is on Kickstarter right now. It's like four days left uh, uh, for season uh, for season two to end. You can still pre-order the cards through, through the Kickstarter. And tomorrow, I just got, it's so exciting, I just got uh, um, legal sign-off <laughs> to uh, to add the Big Bang Theory. Uh, the card is gonna go live at some point tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome, so, so. dude, congratulations. Thank you know, so uh, uh, Justin, a uh, side note, we uh, started a monster in the chat room because now they're just like season 14. <laughs> just You just hear gunshots. And then season 14 oh, is no. like... 15 Things is get like... really dark past season 13. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we bring it back, to, you know, and then it's, you know, set, 17 is a little bit more, you know, not as violent, not as bloody. A little more... Big Bang Theory, I hardly do her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but seriously. I really didn't appreciate the really racist setup to that punchline. Uh, well, it's unfortunate that nobody heard it at home because it was a doozy, let me tell you. All right, Justin, what are we up to today? <laughs> oh, Brian, I am just carried along with the momentum of the show so far. I'm so excited. We are going to talk about what everybody is going to talk about this week. Yes. We will make final and definitive predictions, and that is a prediction. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to point that out before I had to. Thank you. Not a regular prediction a like other shows do. No. no. We do predictions. Other shows do predictions. We do preditions. That's what we do. We do predictions. Do. It's the, we're we are going to ride the road, the road to prediction. prediction. That's right. <laughs> uh, with iPhone 5 rumors and analysis, that is to follow as well. Uh, Len, listen, it's been great that you've been on so far, but we are literally minutes away from kicking you the hell off. Yeah, no, this is not, we don't normally do this, and I apologize. It was, and Justin's being a jerk by phrasing it this way, but we have a celebrity advice expert that we're going to bring way, him on. Way okay, bigger celebrity. Don't, you're making him feel bad. You're just going to, it's, it's. Let's. We're not going to say who. We're just going to say you're not even on the same planet I, as this guy. Well, like. let me just say that you are. You probably will have this person in your Geek a Week deck season like eighty seven at some point. Ooh. So you're not even. Intrigued. You're like a. You're like a tiny. You're like uh. You're like those moons stop. that are stop. outside planets. <laughs> stop. Stop that. Like you're, you are. Stop. You are an empty Happy Meal container thrown off one of those moons. You. It's, it's just <laughs> floating. Out in space. That's okay. You know and what? I, uh, compared I am to okay this celebrity, this, <laughs> I, I, I hope you that uh, this person will uh, will be really exciting and, and and bring you tons of ratings. Right. Good. Exactly. So the see, and Wait, that's uh, called that's called being classy, Justin, which is the opposite of what you were. <laughs> you were a douchebag. Can we can no, we get started? Listen, all right. I'm trying to just spell it out for everybody. We want to keep him. You know, we want to keep it a secret. Uh, also, by the way, we are joined by a fantastic. Uh, musical guest Lumpia will be joining us a little bit later in the program. But first, you want to know what? Uh, we're going to be the first uh, show on Earth to discuss what's happening with this iPhone 5. Yeah, let me tell you. Here's the thing. Uh, here at the Twit Network, we pride ourselves on bringing you guys the most accurate news. They get as much as you possibly can get within the bounds of journalistic integrity. We here at the NSFW show, however, would like to go a step farther. That's all I'm yes. saying. I'm just yeah. saying we would like to speculate irresponsibly as to what's going to happen with the iPhone 5 announcement, which we can now absolutely confirm will occur at 8.37 in the morning last Thursday. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we all know that invitations went out uh, today, right? Do, do, do we really know that? I, I don't, are you... They do. Okay. They, did went out, they, they went out today, and they smelt like 
butterscotch and cinnamon. <laughs> And when you opened them, it played like a twinkling sound effect, and you smelled the butterscotch, and then cryptically it just said, if you smelt it, you dealt it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and it just had the date, 847 on a Thursday, right? Yeah, 847 uh, at some point, it just said. It didn't even have a date of when it was going to be. And then it was just like, uh, it was like, at some point, and it was like, you want more info? I don't know. What do I look like? The president? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so, so there a little voice chip inside the thing? Yes. Uh, I, I'd it heard that rumor. Those, but it was, in, it was in those cartoon high-pitched voices. It was like, hey, you want an Apple release? How about you come down to the Moscone Center? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that that's just what we know so far. Now let's get into speculating. Okay, so let's uh, the stage yes. is set, right? Yeah. It's it's next. Well, next... of course, the, the the biggest thing uh, aside from obviously whenever the iPhone comes out, it's a very very big thing. It's going to be probably the biggest tech uh, buy for people during the Christmas season. It's off its release schedule from where it traditionally has been, which has been in the spring. But probably the most significant thing that will be different is that you know nobody is predicting a Steve Jobs sighting, new Apple CEO. Tim Cook is going to be on stage. Uh, what have you heard, Brian? Brian, you got a lot of sources in the Cook camp. Well, uh, um, I, I, what have you heard about his preparation? Here's the thing: like my my words don't come from Apple itself; it comes from the people who run the Moscone Center, right? I know a lot of the tech people there. I played there back with uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive about like five years ago, uh, and some of the roadies who still work there said that they saw some of the dress rehearsals, and it was claimed that it was only to boost confidence. But it was claimed that Tim Cook was actually wearing a fake beard, glasses, a turtleneck, and some blue jeans. They, he swore it would not, he would not wear it for, for the event. I mean, he actually, he, he, he stopped short of pinky swearing. There was this awkward moment when he went to go do this. He was like, oh, no, trust me, I will. Yeah. But apparently yeah. that's his big confidence booster. So we may see, we may see a, an, an homage to the great uh, Steve Jobs. So physically dressed in Jobs-like attire. Uh, right. uh, Len, mm. Len uh, obviously you are... Uh, a, a, a wizened and respected tech journalist. Wizened. Um, he knows you're old you and crusty. You are crusty and old <laughs> like Merlin. <laughs> well, you know, I had actually some heard... news, old wizard. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me get uh, to the uh, to the crux of what I want to say. Or or the whole uh, crux, the, as I like to call yes. it. <laughs> the whole crux, yes. Let me get to the whole crux uh, of what I heard. <laughs> I too have friends at the Moscone Center, and uh, I understand that Tim Cook, although he may be playing homage to Mr. <laughs> Jobs, <laughs> he um, there there was a small problem uh, during the dress rehearsals, where a, um, uh, a st uh, st Tim Cook was turned, and there was a wardrobe malfunction, a small <laughs> nipple slip happened. And it was it was very upsetting for a lot of people, and they're taking all kinds of uh, precautions to make sure that does not happen live next last Thursday. All right, now sometimes now, I'll, I'll tell you, what, uh, Brian. I think what what obviously uh, Len is referring to. There's been a lot of rumors kind of swimming around back channel on the message boards that there was indeed a, a wardrobe malfunction. Len, you are saying it was a nip slip when what has been floated is that it might have been left nut. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did hear that as well. I was, uh, I was on the left nut um, uh, message boards and that was it was it was on fire, on fire. I could not believe yeah. it. Unrelated the message boards were lighting up. <laughs> Unrelated to the actual Apple release, you just happened yes. to be an enthusiast, and then all of a sudden it was just it's, like it's news one of my flash. bookmarks. I go on a daily basis. It's just the first place I go. I'm sorry. No, of course, of course, it's cracked and then nip nuts. Not yes. Left, left nut. Nuts. Left nut. Sorry. Get it right, okay? Sorry. Uh, listen, I, I do listen. This is actually I, I've, I've been I've been texting with my sources. Um, for the last seven years. <laughs> and finally, we've come back with some hard data that I can now report exclusively to NSFW. Um, Tim Cook is going to deliver the keynote with a visible gun <laughs> in his pants. He's going to have, like, open carry, or he'll just, like, you'll see the outline of the 44. 
here's how it's going to go. And this is, listen, I'm going to get killed. My sources are going to get killed for revealing this. This is very big news. He's going to start out where it's just going to be a very, very visible bulge in his shirt and his pants. That's it. Like, like then, it's going to start with a tight, like, smash cut to just to the bulge in the pants. And then exactly. it's gonna it's going to pull out like this. Well, yeah, and, and it's just gonna it's gonna stagger as as the event goes on. So it's just gonna be like first it's just gonna be the bulge, and then at some point it's gonna be like, uh, how much has the iPhone usually been? Five hundred ninety nine dollars. What is it now? Four hundred ninety nine. And he's just gonna stand up, and he's not even gonna pull his shirt out. He's just gonna lift his hands as if to say, "Wee!" <laughs> and his shirt's gonna lift up enough that the gun will now be absolutely visible to the audience. <laughs> Uh, and then at the, at, at the point where he does one more thing, he's actually going to pull the gun out and just start firing <laughs> for no reason. Well, no, see, this, That's going to be the one more thing is I have a gun and I'll fire it in front of a crowd. Right. Well, you see, this contradicts my sources, which were saying, I mean, all that is accurate. I think it is going to happen. But the one more thing I was told was he was like, I'm going to reduce the price all the way down to eight ninety nine. And then he pull, holds up the gun again, and everyone cheers. Like, that's, that's the deal. It's like, oh, and if you okay. acknowledge that, you know, mm. you, you thought you heard a different price, then, you know, bad yeah. news. Uh, you know, uh, I, actually, I Brian, didn't... I'm still getting, I'm getting another, another text. Um, apparently, right nut as well. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> You're like, hearing yeah, right no. nut as no, well. I... Not, not a, a, an exclusion to the left nut, but right nut as well. I am I'm I'm online right now, and my sources are saying to me, and I'm just looking here right now online. Yeah, you know the gun is true. The gun has been confirmed, actually, Justin. Yes. Uh, here's oh, good. what I'm hearing, is that at some point Tim Cook will, in fact, off a furry. <laughs> Well, and it, furries, furries, of course, which run around the Moscone Center 24 hours a day for the last yes. 15 years. Well, a little known and fact, what they do is they, they actually hire uh, improv actors who and they tell them to dress as furries. They're going to do a furry sketch. They don't realize that there's no furry sketch ever. What they do is they wait one at a time. They pick one at random. And they're like, okay, your situation is you're going to crash an Apple keynote and say, I don't want to buy an iPhone. He runs out. Tim Cook, boom, bullet in the brain. They, they write a check for $3 billion and they're done. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm also told that he's going to shoot. The, the first is going to come out and say, Android rules! And he's just going <laughs> to shoot him right in the head. And then look everybody in the face and go, Who runs this? I run this! I run this, bitch! It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the tr absolute truth. I I cannot believe. Yeah, I, uh, uh, and left nut. Yes, they are confirming that as we're well. We're also told yes, both nuts have been confirmed, and also apparently responding to rumors. Uh, Tim Cook has also just responded on his official Twitter. Of course, I'm gonna be packing. Uh, <laughs> I guess to the gun rumors. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, so what about according to Twitter? Well, let's talk about the hardware. Uh, first of all, my sources are saying uh, three cameras, at least three, possibly a fourth as well. What are you hearing, Justin? No cameras. <laughs> They're going to take um, away the they cameras. They feel that we've moved. We are in a post-camera era. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they've decided that now... Uh, of course, mental imagery. Yes, is so, so much the theater part of, our of the lives. mind is, and in fact, uh, we actually have this this promo here that uh, that it, it it shows nothing is what it, it shows. It shows it's like, ladies and gentlemen, think <laughs> of anything, and that's what you can achieve. Anything when you eliminate cameras, because yeah. it becomes about your voice, your emotion, right? And apparently, I mean, they're they're what what I've been told by my sources is. Don't people like to take pictures? And their response is going to be, just remember it, bro. <laughs> how hard is that? Just in, then, in here. But then they explain how Why much better it is. I need to take a picture of what you look like. Am I going to be like, here, go, switch the camera to you. Oh, my God. How do you look like that? I had no idea. See, I don't say that because I remember. I don't need a picture to look at you and go, that's Brian. You got the best I've camera in your head, man. That's no, that's the new, great. Uh, well, and, yeah. it, and, and the, ta the tagline is, your memories, comma, better. 
That's what they're going for. It's just like if <laughs> yeah. you have pictures, all it does is ruin the, the memory because it's like, well, I didn't. I wasn't flying, and I certainly wasn't fighting Jesus over the River Kwai. <laughs> That's the way I remember it. Yes, that I remember that. Bridge. I remember seeing that yes. in my brain. <laughs> yes, I totally remember that. The theater the best, of your the mind. best photograph ever. Uh, I understand, Len, uh, you know, final, I actually hear, heard uh, not that there was going to be no cameras, but there was going to be at least one camera, and my, my sources were telling me, actually I'm getting a text right now that's telling me that actor, uh, child actor Rodney Allen Rippey will be come standard with every single iPhone. <laughs> you actually get photo. the child actor with every single one. That's huge. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is a child actor. It may, the Rodney Allen Rippey model is coming in at around 1200 it's kind of expensive yeah they're hoping by the time that the show rolls around eh, maybe around 700 800 right around there uh, but, uh, but yes child actor with each one what, what, uh, Len what are your sources hearing about Rippy's presence at the keynote will he be there and what will what role will he play uh, Rodney Allen Rippy I understand uh, and I, once again this after left nut I go to the Rodney Allen Rippy site <laughs> and, and I get all my Rodney Allen Rippy news uh, and uh, he will be playing the part of John Mayer singing <laughs> God Bless America. Uh, you, uh, but, well, you're beautiful, America. You it's it's going to yes. be a mashup you're... of God Bless America and You're Beautiful. It's, uh, it's yes. going to be He's amazing. been working on it. And, yes, you know, uh, it's, it's been a pretty uh, – uh, he's been working on it, been, been trying different things, workshopping some things, and um, it's, been, it's, been, it's been huge. It's, it's kind of taking over uh, – uh, the, the the Rodney Adam Ribby site actually, and um, the uh, it's just it's just it's uh, he can't wait to uh, to to put that forward at the keynote. All right, look here we go, Justin. Here's forty three year old former child actor Rodney Allen Rippey welcome standard with all phones. That's a huge scoop, Len. <laughs> it is actually forty three years That's old. Amazing. That's awesome. Forty three year old actor. <laughs> uh, look, Justin. Here's I I didn't want to. I know we talked about you know spilling the beans on the big kino beforehand right but it did not occur to me until just now apple might not want all these details out we got to have we got to figure out some way to make sure that these recordings get out to the world that they can't be taken down by the man that that we 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 cannot be that you cannot stop the signal is what i'm worried about um brian that's impossible what you're asking for is akin to staring at a lake and screaming Jesus Christ, who lives in the lake behind my house, rise up and grant me miracles. <laughs> and then nothing happens. Why, Brian? Because Jesus Christ doesn't live in a lake behind your house. You want to know why? Because he's a fable. What, Johnson, what, where, where is this going? He's fake. <laughs> they made him up. Justin. I, he's not really a guy. He's not a guy. Okay. No. He's not, he wasn't a real guy. He was just like a, a thing in a book uh, that they made. It's like girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> like Aramaic with the something Sanskrit tattoo. Uh, how, how does this have anything to do with our sponsor? Squarespace.com <laughs> will put literally anything on the internet, which is like what I just said. Oh, like pretty much anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'd save us, See, man. listen, there's literally anything. You can, you can cut the expanse of the internet. You can travel from pillar to post, my friends. Find whatever you want and stitch it together like so many stray animals with twine you borrowed from your grandmother and put it on the internet with whatever you want and no one's going to take it down, okay? No, man, you know, no cops banging at your door. No crazy people. Why are you sewing cats together? How <laughs> can you pain? Enough of that noise. Get a squarespace.com website. Do what you please. No one's going to take it down. Now, Brian, why won't they be able to take it down? Why, why don't you <laughs> tell us? Because it's protected with holy fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> holy fire sounds an awful lot like load balance servers. That makes sure that no matter what kind of crushing traffic comes to your site, it just, you know, 
all of a sudden, like, it's like, oh, wait, is there too much on this? Hey, bro, let me help you out. These are two servers talking. And then he's like, oh, I got a few people here. And he's like, no problem, man. Site stays on. Boom, you never get taken down ever. That's the Squarespace promise. And it was written in the Bible. <laughs> what the hell? That's the best commercial I've ever heard. <laughs> okay, but it Honestly. gets better. It gets better. Clearly, Len's <laughs> sold on this. He, he's Can ready I to buy right. get Len, a Squarespace Len, account. Your expectations right now, seriously drown them in your bathtub. Because they're <laughs> going to get so much better. The ones that you have now are awful. They are, they are just disgusting. Little maggots. <laughs> Until I tell you that you could get... Uh, Two weeks free <laughs> Plus, on Squarespace. Yes, yes. No trial. They don't ask for a credit card or nothing. They don't ask you to Better write. Because they don't believe in credit. Um, all the world is run by the Federal Reserve, which is 52% owned by the Rothschild family. <laughs> okay, and stop. Bank. Stop talking. Okay? They don't believe in it, and they don't believe in credit. So that's why they're going to give you those two weeks for free. Now, after those two weeks... You're going to need a credit card. Because listen, ask grass or cash. No one writes for free, kids. Right. Okay? No, of course, of course. <laughs> you know, listen, they got to keep the lights on. But so, if only there was a way, like, we could get them a discount. More importantly, they could somehow indicate that they thought your ad read was funny and not horrific. Because if they thought it was horrific, then we might not have them as a sponsor anymore. If they thought it was funny, they could show that by going, signing up, and using promo code NSFW9. Not only will that let them know that it's NSFW that's, that brought them this lead, but it'll let them know that it was in the month of September, your most horrific month of ad reads yet, that they <laughs> yes. finally made the decision to sign uh, up. And Brian, listen, I, like, I don't, this is kind of not professional for me to tell you that you totally screwed up and you're embarrassing the sponsor by not saying the code name right. I, it's pronounced NSFW9! <laughs> nice. So there we go. Squarespace.com, uh, offer code NSFW9! <laughs> That's all you got to remember. Uh, look, okay, look, that's, uh, I've had enough. I'm done. I'm done with all of you. I'm done with you and your unprofessional ad reads, Justin. Sticky yeah. and infectious though they may be, they're too dangerous. They put the show in jeopardy. You're off. You're off. You're off. You're off. You're off. I don't want to pay attention. Len, I... uh, listen, you sat there and you watched Justin set fire to this episode. You didn't do anything. I'm sorry. You're I'm out sorry. too. I'm bringing in celebrity guests. We're going to have a special, awesome, well, we're an advice show from now on. Okay. <clears throat> well, yeah. Well, we stop have, talking. We, we stop secured. talking. You're off the show. You're fired. You're you're done. You're out. Well, I just want to introduce. That, that, our I'm sorry. Is that a ghost talking? Because it sounds like Rodney Allen Rippy, everybody. <laughs> Wide of Shelby, North Carolina. <laughs> Come on in. It's uh, <laughs> no. See, he's dead, and you're dead. That's the reason you guys are seeing each other right now. Because you're both ghosts. All right. Now, if I may, new format for NSFW. Let me find some music here. To uh, there we go. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brian Brushwood. As you know, we've made some changes here at the NSFW. Now it's just me. However, I do have a fantastic celebrity guest and the ghost of Justin Robert Young to join us for our new show. That's all about advice from celebrities. In this case, who is our fabulous celebrity, Mr. Justin Robert Young's ghost? Um, well, uh, first I want to thank Lake Jesus for his hospitality. He's a really nice guy. Um, and as a ghost, I'm enjoying swimming with him in the everlasting waters of the peaceful stream. Uh, our guest today is Jesus of the Lake. That's where his face that guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, of course, you can visit that. Jesus of the Lake. That's where his face that com. That's where I am because I'm dead. And that's where dead people go. They join Jesus in a lake. Please tell your children that immediately. All right, go um, ahead. Our guest today is not only, uh, I seriously, you know, in all seriousness, folks, I'm going to take off my hat. He's, he's a legend. So serious. He's a legend. He's a legend. Um, and, and I mean this not only of pop culture, but of uh, 
a very unique brand of American uh, storytelling. I, I do very firmly, firmly believe that if jazz is America's contribution to music, that uh, this man's writing has been very so influential to uh, a uniquely American style of writing and, and creativity. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to introduce to you our special guest, um, a comics legend, uh, writer, author, Stanley. Ladies and gentlemen, you, everybody, you stand up for Stanley. You stand up and you clap for Stanley. Stanley. True Lee. believers, how are you doing out there? Stan Lee, everybody. Oh, oh my God, Stanley, you have no wow. idea. This is the biggest thing ever. This is uh, Stan Lee. You have no idea. I've been. Uh, I I got sick with chicken pox when I was in eighth grade, and I started reading the Iron Man, and I've been a fan of of Marvel. Co when I moved to Norway, I had comics mailed overseas so that I could keep up in the Marvel Universe. It was amazing. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, Bobby, right? <laughs> Your name's Bobby, right? Uh, yes, it's Bobby, it's Bobby. Ah, uh, yes, you're the spiky-haired man with the spikes on your head man that's my that's my newest comic i'm working on called spiky head man for you bobby for you thank you i'm, I'm thrilled to hear it listen um we got a lot of people who have some serious questions and they you like my you like my vest <laughs> <laughs> i understand i they gave me the vest before i got up here i hope it's the uh, I hope it. I hope it shows up on your show. <laughs> you know what? Yes, I'm, pretty, man. I'm pretty sure we can make it. Yes, man. <laughs> well, Stan, listen. What we wanted to do is, of course, if we had you on, we wanted to have you on and talk about what you're best known for. Uh, of course, the ladies. Ah, um, uh, yes, I ask, love the ladies. I was uh, known as uh, Curly Head Ladies Man. That's my newest comic book that's coming out next week. I hope you like it. <laughs> True believers, well, yes. it's me, Stan Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Love me. Love you know, my work. I don't. I don't remember Stan Lee always proclaiming his name and announcing that he was there before. But now that I you see better believe it. it, buddy. Stan Lee doesn't go. Doesn't talk about himself in first person. It's always in third person. I am Stan Lee. Damn it. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, we have Daniel who wrote us in uh, for this segment, which we're calling Help Me, Stan Lee. That's me, Stan Lee. <laughs> um, <laughs> he asked very simply, what are the best moves to pick up ladies uh, at, at the bar? Uh, Brian, obviously, this is a man who needs help breaking the ice with the opposite sex. Uh, yes, and I would like to point out that uh, much as though everyone might assume that was me that wrote it, this was not me. This is from somebody who really is looking to pick up ladies at the bar. Uh, as as the host of Scam School, I would say what you want to do is you want to impress her, maybe show her a trick, engage her. Just the number thing, number one thing that ladies respond to is is uh, confidence. You want to be confident because that's the, the, the alpha male as it is. That's what they want to go for. And don't worry about, you know, it's, it's one of those things everybody worries Oh, about rejection. Look, man, if you genuinely don't care about rejected, you get rejected 80 times, the 81st time, you'll be a hit and it'll be wonderful. That's what I would say. But of course, I'm not Stan Lee. What would you say, Justin? Uh, well, I, I'll t I just want to hear what, what Stan has to say. So, so go ahead, All Stan. Right. Back when I was creating the characters, the wonderful universe of all those super characters, of course, when they found out I was doing the fantastic Spider-Man and the, the amazing <laughs> four, those great people. Of course, I got lots of women all coming around me and talking to me. And what I said to them, and this always worked, and Bobby, you should really <laughs> use this line whenever you can. I said, ladies, the gamma ray has hit my crotch. <laughs> That's all you gotta know, okay? And boy, did I bring him home. <laughs> now, did you, That's all you gotta know. Did you say know. that before the Incredible Hulk uh, hit shelves? Like, was that where that What's came from? What's the Incredible from? Hulk? Oh, <laughs> right. No, I was just, that was something I just talked about with me personally. I did have a lot of gamma rays out down there. I had, I had many multiple surgeries, so it's very, very hurtful. <laughs> well, <clears throat> moving right along, Robert uh, writes us, uh, <laughs> Are you okay, Justin? You, you you don't usually seem to have this much trouble plowing through. No. All right, he writes, 
I'm a senior going into college, Syracuse University, my alma mater, this coming summer. I have a girlfriend who's already in college who wants to move in with me when I start. My mom is kind of an overprotective woman with a stick up her butt. How do I go about telling my mom that I'm moving in with my girlfriend? Okay. Uh, so this is this is a uh, he he this is a non-traditional situation, and she's he's afraid that his mom is going to be like, "Well, you're not married. Don't be in the same house." That kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I would always say that no matter what, in any situation, honesty is the best policy, be it with your girlfriend and how you guys discuss that you guys should be moving in together, and with your mom, that no matter what, they're always going to appreciate that you lay out the full and complete facts for them, as opposed to hiding and trying to finesse the truth. Oh, so you're saying, you're saying be sincere, be honest, let yourself be who you're going to be, and have her accept you as is. Uh, absolutely. Right. That, that's what I would say. Stand. And also make sure that, that, that your mom meets, uh, meets, meets the girlfriend. But of course, it doesn't matter what we say. Uh, yeah, no, it's not up to us. It's up right. to Stanley. Stanley, how does one resolve this situation? You know, I had this exact thing, same thing happen to me when I was a senior in college. I had the exact same problem that this young man at Syracuse, U Syracuse University is having. And the way I handled it is I sat my mother down. We had a long conversation about what I wanted as a, as a, as a man, as an adult. And I took my mother's face, cradled her face in both hands, and I kissed her straight on the lips <laughs> for about an hour. It was magical. Right now, I'm, as I'm telling you this story, I'm thinking to myself, maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> and you faced my mother's name like that. <laughs> but it's the truth. By the way, have you checked out my vest? This was my mother's vest, by the way. This was the, from the day that I talked to her and kissed her. Oh my God, I said it again. <laughs> I, I think I need to go into therapy. <laughs> oh my, oh my God. <laughs> uh, no, no, right, yeah, stand, right. I do want to point out that that was tech savvy guru from the chat room who wrote that last one. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, everything's, uh, uh, you're, you're I, fine, um, Stan. No, keep I, it. Um, I am, I, I gotta sit down for a sec. <laughs> okay, you, I you're you not were... sitting down now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm standing. God. I'm a very <laughs> tall man. <laughs> okay, okay, now I'm back. Okay, okay, good, good. He's got it together. That's uh, called kissing mom on the mouth, man. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out special power. next week. Yes, it's part of the Marvel reboot, which I have nothing to do with. Kissing <laughs> mom on the mouth, man. I look forward to that one. Um, <laughs> Justin, do we have another question? Um, well, you know, we have we have one more that I want to save to the end, but uh, let's give it a chance for people in in the chat room to ask their questions live. Of course, now that they know that Stan Lee is on, before people who are writing in were just writing in, uh, you know, to a generic send the uh, true celebrity. believers my way. Send the true believers my way. Please. Yes. Okay, we will. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. I will. Um, oh, Have man. I told you about how Jack Kirby is a zombie? <laughs> I got to tell you that story one day. Jack Kirby coming out of the grave, living a zombie, uh, going yes. after trying to eat my 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 flesh and my brains. That's a, that's for another time. Uh, for another no, time. no, it is, it is. However, I will kick it over to the chat room and say, uh, fabulous denizens of chat realm. Why don't you guys go ahead and ask us your questions? You're on the uh, line. Well, oh, here, this one is actually uh, a ton de gasa. Uh, asks, um, Stan, um, how are babies made? I guess a very rudimentary question. We have a lot of young listeners. Uh, to this uh, to this particular program, and I don't think me and Brian have to chime in at all. Uh, if you can just explain. Uh, in, in you know, obviously you're a fantastic storyteller. Uh, how are babies made? Are you asking me? No, well, yes. I mean, not Justin is pretending like it's not him asking you. He he blamed it on okay. somebody from oh, the chat room, but I clearly see. he's asking you. Well, I know this is a this is a family show, and uh, I don't want to necessarily go into all the details. But what I will say is, if you look up. 
the name Nagasa <laughs> online, that will tell you everything you need to know. Nagasa. Wasn't that from Nagasa? The, the gentleman oh. that, named, that, that asked me, his name was Nagasa, correct? <laughs> Ton Nagasa. What's his name? Ton Nagasa. 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 Ton Nagasa. That's, a, that's the sound you make when babies are made. Nagasa. <laughs> it's the truth. You guys didn't know that? Well, who am I dealing with here? Are you guys stupid or something? <laughs> the Gaza. No, no. Right, no. The only person that's hearing this. No, uh, no, uh, Stan. I think you uh, you've nailed it. You, uh, uh, as they're saying in the chat room, wow, I'm learning stuff. That's great. Yes, the Gaza. <laughs> he, cer he certainly oh has. Listen, uh, our last question is a very personal one, and the person uh, who wrote in requested that we not use their real name. Uh, so I'll just read it's it as they probably the Gaza again. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, most of my early sexual experimentation occurred with my girlfriend during my youth. Unfortunately, this girl has become insanely paranoid about pregnancy due to her borderline abusive Catholic parents. Because of this paranoia, losing her virginity in the traditional sense was off the table. As a result, my first time quote-unquote going all the way was done in the back door particular. Does this count as losing one's virginity both for the male and the female that uh is directed right at stan lee i don't feel that me and brian need to comment so we will just send to legendary writer and author cultural icon stan the man lee go ahead well you know i'm glad you're asking me this question <laughs> i go back to the late the late 1960s issue number five of iron man <laughs> And in that issue, Tony Stark has, an, has, has, a, has a problem. <laughs> I don't think we, I have to go into much detail of what his problem is here, because, you know, we, the, 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 the gentleman or the, the, the person that just had in the chat room kind of gave the whole story away. <laughs> I spent hours writing that story, by the way. <laughs> and now they just gave it away. So, so, yeah, so Tony Stark had some sort of weird experience. Uh... Uh, you, you know, uh, with a barn door and stuff like that, and uh, it was it was very upsetting to him. And so the question was, is does it count? Yeah. Well, as losing yes. your virginity. For Tony Stark, the way he solved the the problem, of course, the way I wanted, I was creating a great legend here in Tony Stark. <laughs> is he made a robot? that did that very thing. <laughs> and to it's, him? To Tony? Uh, uh, to different people. <laughs> yes. It this is wait. a true story. Just, you know, <laughs> I always had my characters living in New York City for a reason. Because if you go to the back alleys, you'll find all kinds of things back there. And Tony Stark, of course, was, was finding stuff that was really uh, kind of odd, if you will. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, a lot of dancing, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, bare-breasted men and women <laughs> hugging one another, animals, things like that. I, you know, and I worked these in all my stories. Some of these stories Marvel did not allow me to release because they were just so good. Which is why I want to bring up my next character, Backdoor Woman Band. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? You said, I'm sorry, you're next to your new character. Backdoor Woman Man, who is such an amazing character, you have to check it out. True believers, only you will be able to see that. It's pretty amazing. Check it out, folks. I'm Stan Lee. I hope I helped you, whoever you are. Degasa, degasa, degasa. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, look, I know he's got to go, but can you give it just one Excelsior before you go, Stan Lee? Bobby, for you, anything. <laughs> Excelsior, true believers. Yes. I am Stan Lee. <laughs> Love me. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody, oh. please, a round oh, of Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Stan Lee, that, that's, truly, uh, that's truly something. Excelsior to, uh, to you, too, sir. Oh my gosh! I'd like to point out if you'd like to follow more of Stan Lee, um, he's the real Stan Ree on Twitter. 
racist. <laughs> well, it says, I mean, I, I assume it's the same guy because it says right here, Jack Kirby is a zombie. So I assume. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I assume that was it. Oh, there's two, two new tweets as well. <laughs> new character, backdoor woman man. And uh, it's, it's, very, it's very exciting. Uh, so everybody is, uh, of course, very excited for El Celsior, which I guess is a Mexican hero for Stan. Um, all right, Don't well, there we go. My ideas, by the way, Wait, oh, all copyrighted by the Stan Lee. Stan Lee. <laughs> Stan Lee, why are you still here? We're, we're, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to find the bathroom. Um, I'm wearing right, gym well, shorts. Thank Did you, you guys very know much, that? Stan. I'm wearing gym shorts right now. I, I have problems. I know that, uh, Stan Lee, I've heard that about you. Uh, uh, um, well, there, I guess uh, I think we have, we have Len uh, calling back. So, Stan, yeah. uh, thank you very, very much uh, for, for, for coming <laughs> on uh, the show. You were certainly a big hit, and everybody learned a little something. Uh, Brian, back, uh, um, back on the line, uh, by the way, most notably without any kind of vest at all, uh, we finally have Len Peralta on here. Oh, gosh, did you, oh, I can't believe you guys got that guy. Dude, Stanley, he is how amazing. Can we, how can you do half a show with me and half a show with Stan Lee, you got to have the whole show with Stan Lee. Well, I mean, he, he is very, he's got, he's got tight schedule requirements. He's busy writing, always writing that guy. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, <laughs> backdoor man, woman or woman, man, it's woman, I'm, man. I'm, backdoor I, I am really excited. I am actually more excited about that than the DC reboot I, in everything. Now it's all crap. It's all crap. It's yeah, pretty, pretty, yeah. Huge, pretty huge. Um, <clears throat> uh, hey, listen, Brian, um, we have a little project. That we would like to bring. Yeah, look, uh, I know when we talked about uh, telling people about our secret project, like in my mind, it was going to be this great unveiling, like, ah, this is so awesome. We just had Stan Lee blow our minds. He just revealed Backdoor Woman Man live on the bot podcast. Yeah, but, How are we going to follow this up with our little shenanigan? Well, with, with gusto and valor, which is why <laughs> I bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're going to want to follow at Justin R. Young. Uh, at Schwood on Twitter, uh, Justin Young and Brian Brushwood on Google+, Plus, on Facebook, wherever you can find us, because this week we'll see the release of our first comedy album. It's called Night Attack. It is ready to go. It's been submitted. Ooh. It's going to be everywhere. Amazon, iTunes, Bandcamp. We will tell you where to go. Brian, how much are they going to get out of this? Uh, okay, look, here's the thing. <clears throat> In secret, and first of all, I, I, this is how full of self-loathing I am. I want to make sure to always call it a comedy album because it's not like we're on stage telling jokes and people are laughing. These are private conversations. Here's what happens. Every time we finish up an SFW show, uh, you and me call each other, and we either uh, mock ourselves with – riddle ourselves with self-loathing and doubt – or we uh, occasionally get creative and we come up with some pretty funny stuff. Uh, we're, we recorded dozens of hours of these after show conversations and we called out all of our favorite bits. They're polished, they're edited all together. There's a tight 80 minutes that's the album proper. And then there's 40 minutes of B-sides. The B-sides are more of the bizarre, interesting conversations we get into, not so much the telling jokes, comedy type thing, but, but, but like the two of us actually trying to... Uh, just exploring weird things, right, Justin? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it's not really, it's, I don't know. If, if you've ever watched the after show stuff, uh, you will like the, the B-sides, but the, the album itself is, is kind of just pure, uh, pure comedy. If you, if you like our kind of humor, it is, it is very different than NSFW in that it's not, uh, you know, bit dependent or anything. We're not playing any games. We don't have any guests. Uh, but, I'll tell you what. Just, just give it, give it a try. Uh, we're gonna sell it all for the low price of eighty-seven dollars. <laughs> no, well, and actually, what's funny is in the chat room they're making fun of us. Like, how much are they gonna want for this? Blur, 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 blur. I like my NSFW freeze. I like, I like to not pay anything, and I like. All to watch right, fine. Fifty-three dollars. Ah, that's still American U.S. dollars. I pay in pesos. How many pesos? <laughs> all right. Fine. It'll be thirteen dollars and eighty-seven cents. No, oh, that's what I'd pay for the Lady Gaga CD. I ain't, you ain't no Lady Gaga. Maybe you take off your pants. I'll pay you twenty bucks. Um. All right. Fine. One dollar and ninety-nine cents. Right, How's no that? 
you vultures. Now you're just joking. For two hours of Choice Cuts comedy, assembled from dozens of hours of private after show, raw, unfiltered, uncensored footage, and shenanigans, stuff that will prevent us from ever getting called into public office, from ever getting elected to anything ever, and they could have the entire two-hour album for only $1.99. Like, Absolutely, Brian. They're actually uh, seriously pissed that it's too cheap in the chat room. <laughs> they're booing uh, the fact that it's so cheap. <laughs> well, there we go. That's all that uh, That's all that we are, our egos will allow. That's uh, is $2. Uh, in all seriousness, guys, uh, this is... Uh, a very, a very interesting kind of thing for us, and we kind of want to want to go forward and do more of these in the future. So, uh, if you dig the show and and you want, uh, you know, kind of a, a, if you dig the show, you will like it. But it is not the same thing as the show. It is, it is its own animal and thing. Everyone that we've had listen to it kind of comes back with that opinion, yeah. right? Yeah, no, everyone who starts to listen to it, they're like, well, I was afraid this was just going to be an SFW show. This is clearly its own animal. Uh, I'll tell you what. People are asking where they could buy it. We honestly don't know yet. We submitted it, and it's being distributed. Here's the problem is that some of the outlets are going to insist on raising the price up to a default of $9.99 or $0.99 cents of track. Uh, we don't want to well, direct yeah, we you don't, We don't know. I mean, we have no idea what's going to happen. Right, but, but uh, it's submitted, and sometime this week it will publish. And when we do, you will tweet it out, at Schwood, at Justin Yar Young on Twitter. We will Google Plus it uh, on the G plus dot two slash Schwood or G plus dot two slash what are you, Justin? Uh, Justin Young. Justin I Young. Don't know what? Yeah. Right. And then, uh, uh, and of course, you know, Facebook and all that stuff. But if you go to nsfwshow.com, here, I'll put it up here, nsfwshow.com, they'll put, there'll be a big fat banner telling you guys when this thing drops. Uh, <clears throat> here's the thing two bucks. We're only going to see a dollar forty out of that, I think, a dollar fifty. So that's three quarters for me and three quarters for Justin. Seventy-five cents a piece. If you've enjoyed our shenanigans, we'd like to give you two more hours of stuff to think about, and uh, uh, and that's about it. We're really excited. We've never done anything like this before, and we suspect that you guys will enjoy it a lot. Everyone said really nice things about it. Yeah, and and yeah, you know, the only thing is, uh, yeah, keep an eye on on what. Uh you know, on our Twitters, we are going to try and find the best strategic place to point everybody uh, to buy it. So uh, just, you know, if you're not following Justin R. Young and you're not following uh, Schwood, then please do it because it's going to be pretty sweet. Yeah, and we, we will make a very loud noise when it uh, when it happens, and hopefully we'll rock it to the top of whatever charts are. Yeah. All right, Justin, we got yeah, time. Man, people, and just one, one more thing about people are like, as long as it's not on iTunes, I hate iTunes. iTunes shot my father in cold blood, and then I eventually started fighting crime in Gotham. <laughs> now um, my name is Backdoor Woman Man. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's, it's, it, it will probably be on iTunes. Because a lot of people do like buying things on iTunes. It will not only be on iTunes. Yeah. So everybody who hates iTunes, you will not be forced to buy stuff on iTunes. Don't you worry. Everybody calm down. Uh, but in all seriousness, like, uh, uh, how great would it be to to cheat our way to the top of iTunes? Because iTunes responds to everybody buying something at the same time. And if we had a couple thousand people all click buy for $1.99 on our album, boop, top of yeah. the comedy charts, come on. That would be awesome. Oh, well, I mean, that's basically, we're just kind of, we, we, we've been unclear between our publishing uh, arm and iTunes on whether or not they will let us sell it for $1.99. If they let us sell it for $1.99, we'll direct people to buy it to iTunes because uh, it would be very, 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 very cool to have the number one comedy album in the world for, you know. Five right. seconds. Right. Well, and, and before, pe pe people are saying. Before Pat Oswald punches us in the nuts. Yes, as we deserve to be. And, and uh, we would gladly, we'd be like, oh, it's so bad, but you're really funny and insightful. Oh, I feel the same way about Star Wars. Ouch. I'm sorry, Pat Oswald. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Night Attack. Uh, it's pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, for everybody who's like, like, oh, like, don't worry, it'll be up Pirate Bay. I'm, you know, I'm sure it will be, but yeah, it's no, dumb. look, I'm sure, look, guys. If you don't, don't want to pay us the three bucks, quarters, fine. yeah. If you don't want to pay us 75 cents a piece, then whatever. All right. Hey, you know who you should pay? Our, our musical guests. Who, by yeah! the way, it's illegal for us to pay. It's against the law for us to pay these musical guests. I actually heard that they were related in some way to our guest earlier. Stan, Stan Lee. Stan, Stan Lee. Stan Lee's Stan children. Lee. Yeah, yeah. They're children of Stan Lee. 
Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. Can we get an intro from Patton Oswalt? Yes. Uh, Len? <laughs> Uh, we are, we're going to bring, uh, the, the musical guest on, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jammer B is, is, is Lumpia on. How you doing? Oh. <laughs> Hold on, we hear you guys. Hello? 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 Dude. Yeah, what's going on, gentlemen? How are you guys? Oh, we're all right. How are you? Uh, dude, we're, we're rocking it, dude. You missed it. We had Stan Lee on. It was freaking amazement. Oh, oh. Uh, oh it's just awesome. What can, what can you tell us about, about your music projects? Um, it's us in Stanley's basement, all three of us, and uh, he, he's licensed enough to let us have a drum kit, a bass, and a guitar down here. So, there you go. Awesome! Uh, what are you, you going to play for us? Um, we're going to play um, one of our originals for you guys. Um, it's, it's on iTunes, so sorry if it's evil, but um, it's a song called Midnight Blues. It's a song I wrote for original, uh, originally wrote for solo guitar and then arranged with a band. Right on! All right, so take it away, dude. All right, awesome. Sky Lumpia.
They broke their camera. Uh, it, it froze halfway through. But you want to know what? To a certain segment of our audience that gets really excited halfway through the afternoon, um, they they were delighted by Dude, what they saw. That was awesome. They are going nuts in the chat room. They're very excited about the fact that you broke your camera with the awesome. Dude, that rocks. <laughs> hey, <laughs> What are you talking about? You guys look best. It's the it's the best I've ever seen you guys. Where where can people see more of your music? Um, well, uh, both of our um both of our songs are on iTunes right now. We only have two originals, but yeah, they're they're both on iTunes. Uh, we recorded them and they're up there. So, you know. Right on. Um, right on. Yep. Look for yeah. Lumpia. L U M P I A. Oh, Stanley! Oh, you're Stanley sent you. Oh, wait. You let us free from the basement now? Hi, Dad. Take, take the chains off the door. Get out of Stanley's basement. Uh, all right, Len, where can people see Geek Week? Uh, oh, well, I better get go. Hang on, I go get Len. One second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Geek Week. <laughs> Geekweek.net or go to Kickstarter. There's only about four more days left on the Kickstarter. Go to kickstarter.com, search Geek A Week, and uh, help me fund season two. Actually, season two has been funded, so you can just go pre-order all the uh, all the geeks in the uh, in the 15 card set, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, Big Bang Theory tomorrow. Uh, the card's coming out. Absolutely. By the way, they're saying in the chat room that you can do kck.st slash NSFW Geek A Week. Is that right? Is that what it just said? Yeah. Uh, yeah. NSFW Geek. NSFW Geek is what you can put in there. Uh, Justin, of course, you uh, want to promote your Twitter, your uh, Facebooks? No, Night Attack, Night Attack, Night Attack. First debut comedy album from me and Brian. Follow uh, me on Twitter, Justin R. Young. Follow me on Google+. Plus. But that is the only thing that matters. Make sure you buy the $2 comedy album that we did. Seriously. Night of fire. See you next Tuesday. Nice. Oh, NSF.